Well, hello, Facebook friends. Here I am again live. I'm Katherine Jenkins, and I'm going to be painting live for you today. And I hope a lot of you can join in and see what we're doing here in the studio and see what this is all about. And I'm going to be painting this iris. This is the original painting that I did. They're all watching. And oh, she nothing, watching. nothing on my iPad. I can't see it. Oh, I, yeah. So anyway, this is um, the original of the iris that I did uh, quite a while ago. It has the gold leaf embossed border. You've probably seen this up on Facebook several times. It has a stenciling in the background. Now today we're not going to be able to have time to do all this background. So I've gone on, uh, I've started this painting ahead of time because it's going to take too long to finish it on Facebook because this iris is quite involved. It's, um, it takes a little time. This, this whole painting took me about 12, 14 hours to do. So we don't want to spend 12, 14 hours today. We don't want to take up your whole day and night. So anyway, but before we start, I'm going to move this over. Am I not on? Yeah, you're on. Oh, okay. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Mel. Hi, love. So now, don't get excited. You're going to say, oh my gosh, she's got the whole painting done already. Well. Not really. There's a lot to do yet on here today. Uh, I just went ahead and put a plain blue background um, on it, and I'll explain the colors in a minute when I get started. And we're going to just mainly work on this part of the iris today on camera, and maybe I'll whip in a few leaves or something like that uh, if we have time. But first, I want to make a couple of announcements. And I've got to put my glasses on because I've got my notes here. I've got a whole bunch of notes, so I don't forget what to say to you. So we are in the last countdown for our Paint with Passion online course. And I know so many of you have been to our website and have uh, read all about the course, the Paint with Passion. It's going to be a still life, a floral still life course. And it's going to be available worldwide uh, for anyone that has high-speed internet. And we are almost there. We've been planning this for over a year. And it's going to launch March 1st. That's only about a week and a half away. So Gary and I are very excited about that. By the way, Gary is running the camera today. Um, my partner in crime, he's doing the videotaping. So if you have any questions while I'm painting or questions about the course, he can try to uh, relay those on to me or he can answer some of those questions for you uh, today. And then later, uh, when I'm off camera, I'll go through all the comments and read your uh, questions and try to answer all your questions later. So is everything coming through? Can you all hear me okay? And can you see me okay? If you do, let me know. I don't want to be talking out into La La Land where nobody's there. <laughs> so, are you, can you see me and hear me okay? Okay, great. So, anyway, um, what does that mean? What? Says, just yeah. watching, bring them on camera. What does that mean? Bring who on camera? My kitty cats? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe bring you on camera. Oh. Uh, Gary's not mic'd up right now. I don't know if he can scoot over here and just poke his head in here and say hi. Maybe at the end we'll bring Gary on. Anywho, um, so the Paint with Passion course launches March 1st. You'll be able to go to our website and sign up for that, uh, uh, subscribe for that, uh, because you'll want to get in on the early bird sign up price. It's a $60 savings just for the first 60 days of sign up. And then after that, it will go back to the regular price. And the online course is going to be available. Um, our server is going to hold it for you. So it'll be always, uh, you'll be able to access it for a full two years. So that'll give you plenty of time to do all your paintings. There are eight paintings, eight full length paintings in the course. Uh, they're all from one and a half hours long to three hours. The one I did, I did one and Gary did seven. 
and the one I did was three hours long. So you're getting a lot of video instruction. Plus, I did a four hour general information and technique video that goes with the course in addition to the eight paintings. So it's quite an extensive course. And of course, you'll get the patterns and the photos of the paintings, uh, full size patterns and um, and an information, written information sheet with all the supplies and everything needed. Some of the questions I was asked the last few days is, do you need to have Jenkins products or Jenkins supplies for the course? Absolutely not. Um, you can paint with whatever oil paint is available to you, wherever you are, whatever country, that, that you can get um, have access to, to oil paint. Uh, you can use anything you want. You can use brushes you want. The supply list that we give you with the course only recommends certain things, and it will tell you a complete list of, of what you need, but as far as the brands go, you can use whatever you want. So don't worry about that. You don't need to use our um, supplies. So let's see. Um, for a couple of you that don't know who we are, uh, maybe there's a lot of you out there that don't know, um, but we've been around a long time. Gary and I have been each painting over 56 years. We were on PBS, national PBS television with our weekly show for 34 years, since 1983, I believe. So that's a long time in the last 10 years on international television with our um, Beauty of Oil painting TV show. So um, I will give you uh, our, our website address that you can check out our course. And uh, it's www.jenkinsartstudio.com. And uh, I'll, give it, I'll give, for people that are just tuning in late, I'll give that out again at the end of this video. And by the way, if you do miss some of this video, it's always posted on our Facebook page. We leave our, our live streams on our Facebook page all the time, so you don't have to rush um, to paint today. I, I prefer you not try to paint along with me today. Watch the video later. Watch it over and over when you have time in, in your home, and, and take your time. And today is a good time to grab your notepad and take notes. Take as many notes as you feel you need, because um, that's really important to do. So uh, I think that's enough about our, um, our online course, our Paint with Passion course. Don't forget, coming up soon, early bird sign up. So, uh, oh, by the way, Linda, my niece? Yes. Oh, hi, Linda. How are you today? Linda, my niece is a fashion designer, lives here in Sedona. By the way, we are in our studio in Sedona. Gary and I live in Sedona. And my niece just moved here a few years ago, and, and she's uh, very, very talented. Yes, that's uh, Sedona, Arizona. Oh, one more thing with the course. Um, a couple more things before I forget. Uh, when you complete all eight of your paintings, if you would like, uh, you can email them to us, email the pictures to us, and we will give you a certificate of completion. And this is just a sample. It it's, um, needs some uh, corrections on it yet, but um, this is what you'll get. And it's a certificate of completion saying that you completed the whole course uh, and it's signed by Gary and I, and, and that might be a nice thing for you to have, but you must, you must, Finish the whole eight paintings and send the photos to us. Another thing, we're going to have our own personal Facebook page just for Paint with Passion subscribers. So that, um, that will be set up. We haven't set that up yet. That will be set up uh, just within a few weeks after we open the course on March 1st. And this page will just be for our subscribers and you'll be able to post your paintings on there. For each of you to comment and, and critique and give all your likes to each other and, and just give some nice positive um, feedback to each other and, and talk about you know your art in general. And every so often, Gary and I, as time allows, we will be critiquing if you request it. You must request it on the Facebook page. And um, as our time allows, we will give you some critiques on your paintings to let you know how you're progressing and, and how you can make it something a little bit better 
or not, um, I'm sure you're going to do all fabulous and we probably won't even need to tell you to change that leaf or change that petal or anything. You're going to do great. So, okay, for today's painting, um, as I mentioned, I, I did the original uh, a few years ago and this is what I used. I just used a photograph. My sister in California um, grows, um, she grows uh, hybrid, hybrid uh, irises and so she has hundreds of them and she, and she sent me lots of photos and I like the color scheme of this so well that um, that's what I did uh, I decided to do this painting now how how I arrived at um, getting it up here on the canvas was first of all you want to you want to take your photo there's many ways you can do it if you don't want to use the grid system or if you feel you can't draw well enough. I just drew this one myself, but you can take and in your copy machine, blow this up, blow your photo up, and then uh, make a pattern off of it. Just use some uh, tracing paper and trace over the enlarged photo and make a tracing. And then you take your graphite, black graphite paper, in this case I use, and put your graphite on your canvas and then your tracing paper over it and trace your design off. Simple, simple, because not all of us are great drawers. I know I'm not a great drawer um, and I don't really like to take the time. It's, it's much easier sometimes to just blow it up in the um, copy machine. But you're not going to be putting your drawing on this particular painting until you get your, um, your base coat on. And what I do to prepare my canvas, I'm not able to get really portrait smooth canvas anymore. I used to get it from Fredericks and it's becoming more and more difficult to get. It's, um, it's called ultra smooth, I, I believe. And it's very good canvas. Um, but the canvas I've been getting has a little bit of uh, too much tooth to it, uh, more than I like. And to get detail, we like to have pretty smooth canvas, re really smooth. So we'll take the regular stretch canvas and then we'll um, gesso it. And I didn't put, get my gesso out here. I just use white gesso and a big brush and brush it on. Very simple, very, you can just use any kind of a brush, um, something like this, or just uh, even a roller. One of those real small uh, foam rollers work really fast. You can get it on really fast. You let your gesso dry. And then you take your, why don't I have anything here? I had everything out this morning. My sandpaper. Well, um, anyway, I don't, I can't find it. Um, take real fine sandpaper, sand your canvas very lightly, and then I give it a second coat of gesso and let it dry. You can do this with gray gesso, black gesso, white gesso, or anything and then let it dry and give it a real light sanding again. And the more coats you give the canvas, the smoother. You can get it just like glass. Gary's done paintings where he's done eight to 10 coats of gesso with sanding in between. Real fine sandpaper, that's important. And then you dust, um, before you start to paint, just dust all the excess um, dust, sandpaper dust off of there. And then on this canvas, I, um, what I did was I painted uh, the blue. No, first, excuse me, backtrack, backtrack. This particular one, I wanted a base coat kind of like um, a warm color underneath the iris. So I just used, I had this um, on hand, uh, Deco Arts Traditions acrylic paint. And that's just pretty much the consistency of your gesso. You could even use that a coat of this in place of, of one of your coats of gesso. It's all acrylic, it's all the same. And I brushed that over the whole canvas. So actually, the canvas has three coats already. Uh, two coats of gesso and one coat of this. So it's gotten to be pretty smooth. And you can use any color you want for a base coat. It doesn't matter, any, any color that you feel ties in with your painting. Then um, I went in, <coughs> excuse me, and I took a small brush with a little bit of orange oil paint and I just went over my drawing a little bit. I think you can see it here a little bit. Just went over my whole drawing, kind of to set the drawing down. 
I don't, um, oh, after, excuse me, that's after I put the pattern on with the graphite. You're going to have these little black graphite lines. And so I don't use setting spray on the graphite because then it's very hard to get rid of those graphite lines when you're painting. So what I prefer to do is just put a little bit of um, a, a paint thin, thin down with some turp to do some little outlines around your drawing, around your graphite drawing. Then I painted the background. Now as far as this one goes, <clears throat> all this stencil work and the antiquing and, and this jazzy little stuff on the side, that was done later after the painting was completely dry. I just had a bluish green uh, base coat on here first. And that one, I'll explain the exact colors of the finished one after I get done with this painting. So today we're just primarily going to work on the iris. Now, everyone says um, our paintings look so real, or a lot of people say that. We are not photorealistic painters. Um, there's many beautiful photorealistic painters out there that are, I see on Facebook and all over and they just do gorgeous work. I mean, I could never dream to be that detailed. So what I like to call our painting is loose realism instead of photo realism. Robert Warren's watching. Oh, hi, Robert. Oh my gosh, Robert Warren is a fantastic painter, you guys. Look him up. He teaches national workshops and conventions. He's been around as long as we have and did television for years in our early years of television. And he is a fabulous, fabulous painter, Robert Warren. Look him up. Anyway, um, so what was I saying? <laughs> I forget. There's so much to say. Oh, um, one thing I see on Facebook, that's where I see most of the people posting paintings nowadays. Everybody's posting paintings. And, and even people that take classes, they're not using reference. Um, I, I was trained... Well, actually, I was mostly self-taught, but in my early, early years in the 60s, I started using reference material. It was always our own photos, because in our early days, Gary and I, we didn't have books and DVDs to learn from. Um, we had to pretty much teach ourselves, although Gary had four years of art school. They didn't teach him how to paint his style in art school until after he got out. Then he developed this, the Jenkins style of painting. But I learned uh, to use reference, always. If you want to paint somewhat realistic, that is. Uh, if you just want to do fantasy and make up things, that's fine. But you're going to get realistic work if you use good reference. Not just any old reference, but good reference. Take wonderful, good photos. That's what's fun about being an artist and being an original artist, is taking photographs of the work that you want to do. Um, and that's, that's half the fun of it. And so I, I can't stress it enough to just don't go up to the canvas every day and just try to make something up. And then I, I, I see all of you, or a lot of you say, oh, I get so depressed and it's not turning out and nothing's working. It's because you're trying to paint just out of, your, out of your head. And if you're just beginning, you don't know anything yet. So you're trying to paint what you don't know. And I mean, that sounds silly, but that's true. So good reference, really important. Okay, so I think I've, I've done enough uh, yakking at you for now. I'll talk some more at the end of this. So, all right. Um, so this is dry. What I did, first of all, was <clears throat> I went in and I, I'm not following this photo exactly. Um, for the original one, I did not follow the photo exactly. Um, but when you're following a photo, you want to first look uh, where your shadow patterns are. Up in this, um, I hope you can see this okay, because I can't see my iPad to see what you guys are seeing. So I hope um, Gary's having me move over so he can get in closer, but it might go blurry. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't move any farther. I won't be able to paint. You'll have to get farther away when I start painting. So, um, 
so I see. Sh I usually paint, not always. Um, all rules are meant to be broken in, in painting, but um, it's, a, it's a good um, rule sometimes to follow as painting from dark to light. So what I do first is I establish where my dark patterns are in here, this dark, warm color. And then I'll go in with my medium yellows and then my light yellows and then my last highlights, working up lighter, lighter, lighter as you go. So this is what I've done here. I'm going to have to get you to move back, Gary, because mm -hmm. I can't get in front of the painting. We're in a little teeny area of our studio here, and we have a million things around us. Oh, by the way, uh, I may dip into a little bit of medium. This is Lynn's. Okay, bye-bye, Mel. Back, <laughs> Enjoy Florida. Um, I'm using a little bit of medium. This is just about half and half or three-quarters linseed and, and uh, turp mixed together, odorless. Lynette. And, and hi, Lynette. And uh, just um, turp, odorless turp. Um, Gam Gamlin makes a, a good odorless turp uh, by Gamlin. It's one of the best. Oh, I better show the colors we're going to use in case you're, you're writing down things and have a notepad today. Now, these are pretty much the colors I used on the iris on the whole painting. And we're not probably going to dip into all of these today because I've got a lot of the painting started already. But I'm going to go around here and um, I'll start with white. Can you see this? on mm -hmm. White, titanium. I'll, I always use titanium. It's the best coverage. Ivory black. I always use ivory black because it's also the best coverage. This is just a little bit of liquid. I'll explain that in a few minutes. Uh, this is a magenta. This is thalo red rose. This is a lizard crimson. This is a mauve. This is another purple and it's called Dioxanine. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Everybody has a hard time pronouncing it. Dioxazine. <laughs> Dioxazine. Purple. That's that one. And this is um, Theoviolet. And I may not use that one. I'm not sure. This is Cadmium Red Light. Cadmium Orange. Cadmium Yellow Medium. Cadmium Yellow Light yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, turquoise, king's blue, and that's by um, Rembrandt, king's blue. But you can make a king's blue pretty much by just mixing ultramarine blue with white and maybe just a tiny bit of a, a pink in it or a mauve color in it. This is sap green. This is chromoxide green. This is your warm green. This is your cool, more blue green. This is burnt sienna. Oh, this is just yellow ochre again. Liquin up here. That is just a glazing medium, but we use it as a fast dryer sometimes. If you want things to set up uh, pretty fast, this is by Windsor and Newton Liquin. And you can just dip your brush into it or put a little bit of it into your medium or dip your corner of your brush into your liquid on your palette and it will make things dry faster because linseed alone and turp is very slow drying. So if you want your painting to set up a little faster, your layers, then use um, a fast dryer. And there are several fast dryers on the market, but, but liquid can be used for that. Okay, so what I did already started was I went in and found my shadows. Now this, this is dry. So if you go in, if you can't finish a painting in one setting. You try, you're off camera, you're, I'm on the palette, on the canvas. Okay, so if, if, um, <clears throat> If you go in over a dry painting and you, you can't finish your painting in one day, say, and everybody says, well, how do I start again uh, on a dry painting? You can take a little bit of your linseed oil and brush it over 
the area that you want to go back into. Take a soft paper towel or a rag and wipe almost every bit of that linseed oil off. You just want a tiny, tiny little bit left on there. If you don't wipe enough of it off, your paint will start running down. And by the way, for, for those of you that are just starting painting, one rule you cannot break in painting is you can paint oil paint over acrylic. Like this is acrylic, this color here. And you could even do your background in acrylic, your background color. You can paint oil over acrylic, but never, never acrylic over oil. Okay, that's a rule you, you absolutely can't break. So always remember that. Oil over acrylic, but never oil under acrylic. Okay, so I used just a thin little bit of sienna. And I'm going to go down to my palette now. I'm going to pick up just a tad of linseed oil. And when I dip into my linseed oil, I don't submerse the brush all the way. I'm just using a little flat. Or I may switch to a filbert, which has slightly more rounded, rounded hairs. A flat has the squared off chiseled edge. So when I dip into the medium to thin my paint a little bit, I just dip the corner. And sometimes I'll even dip the corner and then I'll tap it on my brush to get most of it off. Another thing people have been asking me, they say their paint doesn't spread on their canvas. Well, maybe their canvas is too rough. Remember, we talked about that in the beginning. Or they're not using any medium. Or they're t using really stiff paint. Some paint is really soft and some paint is uh, much stiffer. So if you have really stiff paint, you're have to gonna, gonna have to use a little bit of oil or uh, medium. So over this, this dry sienna, I went and I just tapped a little orange or a little uh, light red in some places. And I'm gonna do something a little bit uh, different than what I was doing on this the other day. I'm gonna take a little bit of thin green and yellow and maybe just a tad of sienna. I don't know if you can see my palette. Um, I'm right here. I'm taking a little bit of green. Very thin, you see that? I do have much more medium now on it than paint. Much more. It's, it's kind of like a glaze, almost like the consistency of this liquid. And then I'm going to just tap. I'm going to look at my photo or I'm going to look up, excuse me, my original painting, and I'm just going to tap a little bit of green here and there. Now, remember, your paintings are going to go through what we call an ugly stage. <laughs> I hate to say ugly stage, but they will go through, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle at first, if you're painting something like this, at least. Um, be prepared. I mean, maybe some of you won't go through an ugly stage, but be prepared for that and accept that and, and don't get discouraged. The only thing you care about is the final results. That's all you're going to care about. Now, this is so thin, it's almost like a wash. And I'm just tapping very loosely over some of these brownish areas. And I'm not covering up all the brown. I'm just dipping into more of that little green mixture. Whoops, got some white in there. And that's about all I want to do. I'm getting some glare from my window. I don't know, how are you on the camera, Gary? Is it getting glare? I'm, go I'm getting glare because I'm sitting to the side and I have a window behind me that's aiming right on this canvas. And we close some of our blinds. I'm taking a blender now and just softening that out. Okay, now I'm going to go down with some sap green again and a touch of sienna and some yellow. And this is going to be less medium in it. It's going to be a little bit heavier paint and I'm going to just brush some up. I'm using the edge of the brush right here where there's going to be some green coming up. And we'll be putting lighter green on this afterwards. And then I'm going to take some ochre 
and sienna, ochre and sienna, and I'm going to darken in here just, well, that's not dark enough. Let's take some green with more sienna this time to get it a little darker and get it darker right at the base, right there. Okay. See how I did that? I just brought that green right up there. Irises uh, kind of kind of give everybody problems, so I've heard. I guess it's because there's so many ins and outs and ruffled petals. And, and if you're a little bit afraid of that, pick an iris photo that some irises have quite smooth edges, like instead of all these ins and outs, they'll just be a nice round kind of graceful ruffled petal. And the same thing up here, and there won't be near as many ins and outs and ruffles and all over, and it's a much easier one to start with um, to paint instead of this. This one's quite complicated. So I'm going to just now, I'm still looking around at my shadow areas and seeing what I want to. Just now, I'm still Sorry. looking around Whoops. at my shadow there. areas. Whoopsie. Seeing what I want to. Just now, I'm still That's my iPad with my voice on it. <laughs> Gary forgot, we forgot to mute my iPad. Oh well, we can always get more information by repeating things. Okay. So I'm just still looking for some places where I think I want to put some shadows. And this is that, that warm color again. Jane Potter. Hi, Jane. Jane. No glare on the video. Good. Jane's a veterinarian. Very nice lady that was in our seminar here in Sedona last fall. And she's a veterinarian up in Canada. My daughter's a veterinarian, too. Okay, so now uh, I think I'm going to add just a little more orange. I'm dipping into just a tiny bit of medium. I'm going into the orange, um, and I'm just going to place some orange. Now, you see how sketchy? This is what I mean about everything when you start out looks so messy. Whoops, not that much. You can use your finger to blend it out. Everything looks so messy at first. But you don't want to go in here with hard areas. Remember, these are shadow areas, shadow patterns. Control their stroke. Yeah, too works. much. You and you work to too hard. To be very loose and free with your uh -huh. strokes. So and I hope you're hearing that, what Gary's saying. This is very sketchy, very loose with my strokes. Very, very loose. Where else? Let's okay. see over here. Okay, just dab it all over the place. How about here? Okay. So you see how loose and sketchy that is? No real hard edges. Everything has soft. See how soft the edges are when they go into this, this base tone here? You can even take your finger and blend some of these down. Okay. Or you can take your blender and just soften some of them down. Okay, now the fun part. Get, say, oh, then the, I have to get I my water. You couldn't hear Gary well. That's because I tell him I don't have a mm. mic. I don't have a mic. Yes, if Gary's talking or, or um, relaying questions on to me, he does not have a microphone on. Sorry, um, I'm the only one that gets to scream at you. <laughs> Drink my water. Okay. So now hi, the hi from Italy. Oh my goodness! Welcome, Italy. Alida Sella. I don't know who that is. I don't know if she's a Facebook friend or not. Okay, so it's pretty well set up. We hope. Now you can always go back when you start painting your middle tones and your highlights. You can always go back and reinforce your shadows if you lose them. But when you do go back and reinforce your shadows, again, you don't want real dark, hard spots painted in. Otherwise, it'll, it'll just look too contrived. So um, if you do have to reinforce your shadows a little bit after you put your other colors on, that's fine. You can go back and do that. I very often go from dark to light and back to dark or back to middle tone and then back to light. There's no set rule about that. Okay, so I'm going to dip into my 
medium yellow. Can you see that? And when I dip in, I don't plunk my brush down into this big pile of wet stuff here. I, I take a little aside, I take a little on the end of the brush, and then I pull it out. I have just a little bit of medium on my brush, but I want this to be drier now, drier than these, than these washes we had up here. So I pull the paint out, and then if I want to add other colors to it, I'll mix it. But don't just go into the middle of your piles and get a big glob and come up here. That's another mistake when, when we're learning to paint. Believe me, I've been there. I've, we've all been there. Peggy Cook is watching. Hi, Peggy. She's our friend from New Mexico and our student. And she just moved here to very close to Sedona, so we get to see her all the time. She Livia, used to, And Livia is one of our very good certified teachers in um, Ireland. So look her up, Shanae, Olivia Fitzgerald. And Shanae also is one of our certified teachers in England. They were just here um, from Europe last year for a seminar. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of orange mixed mm -hmm. with this um, yellow. And we're gonna start just plunking around here and I'm gonna go into where my lightest areas are right here, and I'm going to push down and lift up. This, uh, this push down and lift up stroke is so important. Push and lift, push and lift. Not this, like this. Okay? It's push, sweep, push, sweep, push and lift, push and lift. So when we start doing those pedals, that's what you want. And we'll get some nice little ruffles going here. Oh, from Athens. From where? Athens, Greece. Oh my goodness, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, this is the yellow medium with a touch of orange. And I see a little here. Now I'm not gonna be able to copy my original exactly. I'm not even going to try because it would take me forever. Like I said, this painting took me a long time to work on. Now, you see where my stroke, even though I pushed down and lift up, my stroke stopped? That's because I had a lot of dry uh, brown paint under here. So um, if it was wet, it would blend in. If it was all wet underneath, whoops, got cat, our cat's been in here with our cat fur. You can just pull that down and soften it down into the brown. <clears throat> Lynette Campbell wants to know what size brush are you using? This is probably about a half inch. It's a, a number four. All manufacturers have different numbers, by the way. So you never can go and get different manufacturers with the same numbers uh, for the same sizes. Um, so I just go by the size usually. This is about a half inch chisel. For this size canvas, it's comfortable, but you use whatever's comfortable for you. By the way, this is a 16 by 20 canvas, 16 by 20. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on. Now this paint, remember, is a little heavier, less medium. When I say thicker or heavier, that means I've added less medium than what these little washes were underneath. Okay, so. And I'm using, even when I'm pressing down at the very outer edge, I'm still using quite a light stroke, especially when I come in and, and sweep away. The stroke is practically off the canvas. <clears throat> and we just have some little curly cues around here that we'll kind of just fake in. And this will all make sense when we get those other highlights on and some of the other colors going. Keep your blender handy. If you were able to do this flower all in one setting, it would be easier with the, with the background to be um, wetter. I'm going to move my medium over by my palette, which is a good thing to do. Yeah, if you could do it wet on wet. This is not wet on wet, so... <clears throat> it's dragging a little bit on my canvas. And I'm just looking at my original and trying to pick out where these mid-tones, these are all mid-tones. 
Lots of ruffles. This is not the lightest color yet. We'll go up, up the scale in um, the value. <clears throat> now there's a neat little flipped over edge right here. It's kind of a, just a little curly Q thing. I'm using just the corner of my brush. Very, very light pressure. And maybe we'll make another one here. And then we've got this yellow coming up through here. <clears throat> and this area here will be very, very light eventually when we get going on it. Bring this up here like that. Into that. You can use your finger to blend sometimes too. It works. <clears throat> What's making that vibrating sound, Gary? Um, we got some sort of vibrating sound um, on our on our camera today. Yeah, it gets weird. It gets weird. <laughs> Live stream is weird sometimes. <clears throat> and this one, a little bit here, and a little bit down here. For some reason, there's some kind of a time thing. Um, time thing? What? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. It's live stream is kind of crazy sometimes. <laughs> we got a vibration on our cam, on our tripod or our camera, our iPhone. We're just using our iPhone. By the way, speaking of of uh, filming, our our online course is was done by professionals. Our paint was passion, no iPhones or iPads. Um, it was done with professional cameras, professional lighting, really, really close up photography, so you can see every brush stroke we're doing, really, really close. And like I say, those videos, those painting videos, are between an hour and a half, most are two hours, and then mine is three hours. Um, so we go through things very, very slow. <clears throat> I'll soften that down into the, so you don't, you don't want a bunch of hard edges in here. Sue Shealy and Stan. Hi, Sue and Stan. Old friends from our, our painting industry that Stan was a distributor for many, many years. And Sue's a, a book publisher and book author and national, international workshop teacher convention teacher they've done it all they they kind of are and sue's been on tv also for many years good people. Um, really nice people to work with if you see them at the convention they might be going to the vegas convention this this uh next week or so is the vegas convention and we won't be going again because it's too close to our launch of our online course but but yeah that's right when so there's a nice long swooping pedal right there and then, now this is, if you were to try to paint this out of your head with no reference, you'd be a better person than me. Because mm -hmm. this is why you need reference to see where these curly cues and ruffles are. This hmm? is the middle tone. Here. This is, yeah, this is kind of just the middle tone. And it's, then the highlights will make it pop. Yep. So oh, yeah. Look a little flat. We put several highlights, uh, like a, a, a secondary highlight that isn't quite as bright, and then a main really bright highlight. And let's see, we'll bring this over here, and another little just edge right up here. Brush that down a little. I'm using very thin layers of paint, not a lot of paint. That's where you get into trouble, and that's where you make mud. Of course, we don't like to say mud. Professionals say muted. We don't have mud, do we? <laughs> but yeah, you can really get into trouble if you um, use too much paint. <clears throat> and where else? Let's so people want bring... to jump into the highlights yeah, too fast. That's for sure. 
And Take your do, time. When they do that, it gets too busy with too mm -hmm. many lights. Yep. So take your time. This is. Yeah. Oh, there comes a jet. Yeah, I gotta go. My plane's coming in. <laughs> we live. We live right um, below the airport Mesa Hill in Sedona. There's a little, um, a little uh, private airport where, where all the tourists. wealthy people <laughs> have their jets and the tourist helicopters and stuff for the tour rides, and. Um, so that we just got buzzed by, I don't know what it was, a little little plane. But they're always flying over. They're fun to watch, though. But they're very, very close. I'm just using the chiseled edge of the brush when I want to come okay. down in between that green so half, I don't... Half inch flat. Don't miss the green. And maybe another little... <clears throat> Everybody's saying hello to each other. Oh, it's yeah, like, good. It's, it's, it's like a big family out there. It's like a reunion when everybody comes on live. Hey, it's a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now watch. I'm doing this This little, fl there's going to be a flip over pedal right here. And I'm going to push and lift, push and lift. Yeah. And then I'm going to leave a space. And then I'm going to push and lift again. And that's a little pedal that's flipped over toward this is the viewer. Than the other one. Well, at this again, at this stage, this is kind of the the rough stage, as we say. What brand half inch brush? Oh, I don't. Actually, <laughs> this is a Valerie Stewart brush. Valerie Stewart's a well-known national teacher. She does a lot of things, but mostly portraits. I bought this at the Vegas convention. Um, we do have our own brushes. Um, our brushes are red handled, our Jenkins brushes. They come in a big set. I just grabbed this. I, I could use this too today, but I've got them all down here. I'm just grabbing whatever. I've got a pile of brushes. So, okay, now right here, there's another petal that's going to be flipped over this way. And I can't get in any closer. It, yeah, sorry, Gary can only get so close with the iPad because when he was doing his live stream and I tried to get real close with the, um, I mean the iPhone, um, it just goes out of focus. But that's why I say the um, online course is done with professional equipment. And, um, high def. High def, yeah, all high def. You must have high speed internet. Um, to um, access it though, high speed. Okay. Most people have that. Once, take your time with this part. It's very, very important. I'm gonna bring this up a little higher because I don't want it flat across the top. Always look at your shapes, your outside edges that go against the background is it is your petals too flat? Does one whole side of your flower just go straight? Um, I always look at your your shapes. And again, that reference that reference material, you need that. So I am going very slow with this because I'm looking at my reference, which is my finished painting. And um, where does this guy go? This comes around like this. Remember, if, when this is over, they can go full screen and it'll give them oh, a yeah. better view. Yeah, when you go on our Facebook page, when this will be posted later and eventually on YouTube, you can go full screen and, and um, see this, you know, a lot better. And this just pretty much stays in shadow over here. Okay, I think I got most of that in. Maybe we'll just bring a little. No, I'm going to go more sienna and ochre right in this area. I'm going to mix that into that yellow and go just a little bit darker. Keep this a little darker down here. <clears throat> See how it turns around? And this is looking way inside, so you want to leave that dark. Just some sienna. I'll go over that again. Might have a little red or a little orange in there, though. Oop! <laughs> you see? A little. 
Whoa, oh well, I kind of like that. Actually, I see some more of that red coming out here. Now see, this is what I mean. You can go back now to your, your base colors. I'm gonna go with some orange and red. And if you wanna pop a few little accents out, you can do that. Katie wants to know if we can purchase these classes on DVD. Uh, no, they won't be available on DVD. Um, probably for the first two years that it's uh, accessible <clears throat> on the um, computer for online. Um, but not to say that it won't be someday um, we might do that because I know that not everybody has high-speed internet access so okay so I'm gonna look at this stage I'm gonna soften it out see where there's anything that is too hard looking and then when we get the um, highlights on everything Hopefully, will make sense. So, looks like a patchwork quilt right now. So now, as I build up to my lighter layers, I use less and less medium. Uh, sometimes, if you paint soft, you won't need to use any medium on this next color. I'm going to go in, this was our yellow medium that we used, and I had some orange and some sienna in places. But now I'm going to go into our yellow light and I'm going to add white to it. So I'm going to bring some white over here, get some yellow light. And this still is not going to be the lightest color. This is what we call a secondary light. But as you can see, it's much lighter than the, the yellow medium. Now I'm going to have to add just a touch of medium to that. Maybe I'll add a, a drop of uh, liquid to that. Just a little liquid. Smooth it out on your brush. And I'm gonna go in where I see the lightest, lightest area. And that's right here in the middle. And up through here. Now see, you can put it on and then soften it out with the edge of your brush. Very light pressure. Again, some of you are painting too heavy pushing down too heavy. You must be used to using those big brush and stamping trees in. Um, and then you can, that you can go heavy, but not this. This is very, very sensitive painting. Lynn Holcomb. Hi Lynn, happy birthday. Is this coming through okay for her? Ask her. Lynn, can you see this okay? I hope so. I turn my brush to the side in some places. <clears throat> Again, take my blender, soften it in. Lynn's birthday is today. She's my one of my best friends in Florida. <clears throat> Let's go over here. I just bounce all over. Let's highlight this little hmm. flipped over itch. Push and lift. Nice little scalloped edge. And maybe come around, join that into there. Another thing, when you do little flipped over edges, as I'm doing now, don't make your line heavy in all areas like don't make the line the same uh, width like maybe I'll use the edge of my brush and just barely push and do a skinny then I'll push get it thicker then skinny so it's not just one thick line and then it kind of just disappears up in here somewhere <clears throat> in here Lynn's watching I hope she's painting nowadays. Don't know if she's still painting. <clears throat> Take it slow. Do what we used to say in our classes, do more thinking and analyzing as you paint and less painting. 
more thinking and less painting and that will get you to slow down. Now another thing, when I'm putting this um, secondary light on, I'm not covering up all the other tone that I had underneath. I still have that showing. <clears throat> and there's a little out here. As we get out to the outer edges, there's not quite as much. We want that center area to really pop. And then here we let a lot of that shadow show through. But I took, it took me, when I did the very first painting, I've actually painted three or four of this iris. When I did the first one, I just had a gold leaf. Uh, I didn't have stenciling on the background. It had a very, very bright turquoise background with no antiquing or stenciling. And, um, and then I did a gold embossed border along the um, left side. Sandra wants to know if the brush guys will have our brushes. Oh, no, no. Our brushes are only sold through our one distributor. Uh, you can always get them, our mail order business, that JenkinsArtStudio.com. Just go there, and we've had our mail order business for 30-something years. Okay, so um, what was I saying about, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, it's hell to get old. You know, you just lose everything, yeah, including your hair. You're, you're still beautiful. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. He's my biggest fan. Okay, out here I'm just going to take the edge of my brush and just barely, barely tap on the edge. Just, just a little. Maybe some little accents up here and a little one here. And a little catch light way up there. You've been on one hour. Oh boy, I told you this is going to be a long one, guys. Um, oh yeah, I know what I was saying. When I did the first painting with the bright turquoise background, it took me 12 hours to do just the iris and the leaves in the background. And then I put the gold leaf on later. But this one I showed you today, this uh, finished one with the stenciling and all that, I spent about 10 hours on the painting and then probably another four or five hours doing the stenciling and the gold embossed, embossed border, which I'm, I'm going to talk about later at the end of this. But the main thing is we want to get this, this painting in first. And out here, not much, not much light. Just little catch lights on the edge of the petal. They're all talking to each other out there. Okay. <laughs> How are the kids? How are the grandkids? How's the puppy? Went to the vet today, had him groomed. <laughs> well, I know it's a little boring just watching a slow painting. Okay, so. Highlight that one more time and flip it over there. Okie dokie. And I see a little bit, where is it, of a light coming right down this side. And we'll soften that in. And we'll bring some of that light out here. Gee, I wonder where Anthony is today. Mm. I don't see Anthony. So any place you want to soften out, take your blender, soften little wow. edges. Our again. friend from Japan. Oh, Taka. Yeah. Hi. Really good painter that was here for a seminar a couple of years ago. Yeah, he did, he did fabulous time. for his first time on our roses. Mm -hmm. I wish he'd wish he'd come back. I want to work with you again, Taka. But I know it's a long ways away. Okay, so I'm going to soften that in a little bit. So now we have one more highlight, and that's mostly white with just a little bit of the yellow light, mostly white, and it's very dry, no medium, no very medium. Dry, yep, and mostly all white. You see, this is kind of what I was using before, but now I'm over here, it's a little bit lighter. Just a little bit of yellow, very little, and mostly white. 
And we're going to go right in this area. And it really pops now. Really pops. So you see how I built up from the darks to the lights and the real lights? Unfortunately, it might look terrible and I can't see it because last time I was looking at my iPad and I could see, but my iPad's a little far. Oh, by the way, this might be a little out of, look a little out of proportion, the shape, because Gary has to um, be at a certain angle with the camera. And um, I'm, I'm glancing over at my iPad. This would happen when we were on TV too. And it looks like it's um, a little bit, yeah, it's flattened out. The iris is flattened out a little bit. Um, up here, just a couple swoops of the, of the real light. Maybe just a little, this is where you get tiny time. little touches on the outer edge in a couple of places. The highlights make the painting. Yep. And up here. <clears throat> but you don't want to highlight too much. Not all over, not evenly. I see that too. Yeah. People say, oh, this, this tree or this flower petal or something looks great with those highlights. Let's do some more. Let's do some more. And then before you know it, they've highlighted the whole thing equally all over. Sometimes I've gone in because the highlights were not strong enough with a small knife. Oh yeah. And laid in the lights with a, with a knife. Mm -hmm. Really makes a difference. Yep. That's if you're doing big broad areas like and on pots and vases and yeah. stuff. It it works really good. And I don't think I want to highlight much more on this one. Ladies and Sandra, that yellow white just pops this huh. piece. Uh-huh. You got it. I'm going to go in with, um, let's see, a little bit of red right up here, a little more red at the base of that. Right there and a little bit over here. <clears throat> now I'm going to mix some sap green and that light yellow into the white. Sap green, very, very light, white and yellow. And we're going to highlight, well, first of all, I'm going to, let me take a different brush. Go back with our sap green right up here, and I'm going to bring this back up. We lost it a little, a little bit more up here. And then very dry with your light green, with just a little bit more green, maybe, right there. There we go. And accent that area right there. And then I'm going to soften it with my blender. Soften it down. And that's about it for the top. We'll mm -hmm. clean up some edges if we have to later. Oops, I'm sorry. There we go. I'm so used to, to uh, as I paint, moving my canvas back and forth all over. I'm sure we all do that. Okay, down to the bottom. This is why I didn't have time to do the whole thing. As it is, this will be a pretty long video. But, of course, when you watch it later on our um, Facebook page, you can watch it, just pieces of it, bits and pieces. Okay, this is dry. This has got that base coat acrylic on there. If you're joining me late, that's that's this uh, deco art traditions. This happens to be called yellow deep, and that's this color. And then I put a little bit of dark shadow. I'm I'm going to be picking out now. Oops, I got oil all over this. Picking out where some of these dark shadows are on the bottom petals, and that's what I did here. And I just took a little bit of the uh, mauve. the um, dioxazine, whatever it's called, or the mauve, or both, and a tiny, tiny touch of black. And I mean the tiniest touch. 
or everything will get kind of gray on you. And I'm going to just wet this again right down here, just right here. This is a filbert brush, but you could use that little half inch flat. And you see, the main thing is when you're painting flowers, very important, is follow the contour of the petal with your brush strokes. Always follow the contour. And we've got some shadow here. And over here, I didn't do any of it yet. Follow the way the petal is turning. Because if you were to do just straight petal, straight strokes like this or cross like this it just wouldn't cut it flowers that's what i like about them there's so many different varieties and their petals are so interesting um, the way they curve and twist and turn and beautiful colors on flowers gary and i are primarily for the last 50 something years we're primarily um, exotic bird and floral painters and I like exotic birds so much because they're just like little winged flowers and you've got all those gorgeous colors um, that you can use on the birds. See how this petal is curving up? So your, your strokes have to follow that direction. This is the shadow area that you find the indentations in these petals. Run a little bit of along here. Again, that push down, lift up stroke. I'm going to wet this back here again. And so important to get them going the right direction. And all the nice, pretty folds. Oops, get out of there. I've got such a glare on my can my other canvas that I'm looking at that I can't, I can't see what I'm doing. <clears throat> and a little bit under it, we'll put some, we have a flipped up area right here and I'm gonna put a little dark right under there. Thank you, okay. Gary just moved it for me, yes. Now I'm gonna use a little of that purple color, that mauve or that purple, and I'm gonna mix a tiny touch of sienna to it sienna and maybe a little ochre i want a very warm brownish purple in this area here this particular iris underneath its petals this is a petal that's flipped up and you're seeing the back of it and underneath it was a little more um, brown warmish color <clears throat> here. Now you see when when you just do this much on your painting on, on a petal, if you've got everything going in the right direction, it it already looks like flower. It looks like a petal, a big great big floppy petal here. I've got this going a little the wrong way. We'll move it over like that. And behind there, okay. So I think that's enough of the darks. Maybe, let's see, we'll bring this one up a little bit more here. So now we're gonna go into our real pretty purple. This will be kind of our mid-tone. And I'm going to use just mauve mauve with mauve is is warmer this is a ross mauve by the way this is warmer than the dioxazine dioxazine has more blue in it and it's cooler and this is the warmer mauve and i'm going to add a little bit of phthalo red rose to it phthalo red rose and i've got just a little bit of medium this is not thick paint at this stage I have a little medium in it. In fact, you can put, I put a little liquid in it. Now I'm not gonna come all the way up here because I know we've got these blues and these whites in here. So you don't wanna come up, we're gonna come up to about, about that far. 
about that far. So this is mauve with a touch of thalo red rose, which is a gorgeous color. Love this color. And we're going to work it right in to the dark. You can see that it's pretty thin paint. It's not real thick at this stage. And again, keep following your... I'm going to stay out of this, this area a little bit more here, right here, because we've got some reds and oranges going in there. You always have to think ahead. You can't just go start flopping paint in all over the place and then you go, whoops, I filled in the area that was supposed to be white or I filled in an area that was supposed to be yellow. Again, do more thinking and less painting. Okay, this is the mauve with the thalo red rose. Now, it's no blending yet. I haven't really blended it. I'll smooth it all out in a minute. See, you could still see your dark shadows. <clears throat> and over on this side, it's got pretty much the same color, color petal. I don't know if you can see the difference in the tones here, but there is a difference. And again, I'm not going to come way up here because we're going to have that blue and that white coming up there, coming around that area. Still very important, following the, the direction the petals are going and the folds and the curves. A little bit in here, and let's see where else. Okay. Now, you'll see in a minute, this color is really going to pop. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of sienna to that purple mixture. A little bit of sienna. I want it warmer here. I don't know if you can tell. Maybe a little ochre and sienna into that purple. Right in this area, because this is going to have some lights on the edges of this petal in a minute, but it's warmer. Mara is watching. Okay, hi Mara. Mara is one of our platinum certified teachers. Very good teacher. She works in Florida where she lives near Bradenton. Teaches a lot. You can look her up. Okay, and maybe let's just fill in right here a little bit more. A little bit of that sienna mixed in or ochre and sienna mixed in with the purple. Jane Carter loves the bud. Huh. Yeah, that bud, I just al already finished it. You can see this bud's a little different. Um, this bud, I wasn't copying any particular photo, but um, this one I copied from another photo, not the photo I've got here. Here's the bud in this one. There's a bud here and a bud here, but they have no color on them. So I wanted to make one from another photo. Okay, so again, we're going to soften. And by the way, in our kit, uh, you get uh, two or three different blenders, different sizes. I always like to use different sizes to get into small areas. We even have a tinier one than this, and then a large one. If you're doing like blending a whole background, you use a larger. If you're doing little petals, you'll use a smaller. <clears throat> Mel must have went and had lunch. <laughs> so um, anyway. I'm going to take my blender now and soften this in the direction this time that the strokes are going and the petal is flowing. Super important. In the direction. Soften it all up. <clears throat> and then now, let's see, I think we will go in with our light color now, our pink. This is magenta. If you can't, I'm going to show you the difference between phthalo red rose and white and magenta. Um, the magenta is Ross magenta, but actually, okay, I'm going to show you in a second here. Give me a second to mix and then I'll show you on my palette. Okay. Can you see that? see it. That is my magenta, that, Ross magenta. 
Thala red rose and white is this. Now you see this is this is cooler. This yeah. is the the white and the thalo red rose and it's cooler. The magenta is warmer. We used to have a color in our Jenkins signature line uh, called um, oh what was it? I forget. I think it was called magenta and it was a, a warmer like this. So but you can make if you don't have these particular colors you can uh, mix them when you when you learn to mix colors and we talk about that on our I online course about the substitutions you can have. Hi Jim, hope you and Joe are doing good. Gary used to teach for Jim and Joe. They still have uh, conduct a couple of seminars a year in Alton, Illinois. So okay, so we're going to take either, we might take both. I might take the magenta and I might take or I might take the, um, I'm going to mix up both, the thala red rose and the white. I'll mix up a puddle of both and show you the difference. Or you might want to mix them together if you have them both. So here we go. Bright, bright pink. <laughs> so nice. I, I'm flattered that Robert's watching. He is such a, a phenomenal artist. Now, you see how I'm swooping that in? You can either go from this direction up or down, but it's going to have to be softened in and blended in in a minute. But you see this color now, how it's really going to pop. <clears throat> color, color, color. That's what, that's what flowers are all about. You know, when, when people are at art shows, if you show at shows, outdoor shows or whatever, we did that, or in, even in galleries, people are attracted to color, and they will see the color first before they see the subject or anything. They'll see the color. So um, now, but the important part is you got to learn to use color the right way and not just have your brights and shocking colors just dabbed all over the painting. Um, you, you need to learn to, to use color the right way. Now when I come out and I don't want it as bright, I'm using very, very light pressure. I'm just sort of using the corner of my brush to go back and forth. And I'm using light pressure where I want it the heaviest, brightest, then I'm going to push down on my brush and then soften it out with the corner of the brush. And again, you don't want to cover up all your, all your um, darks. Be conscious of those darks underneath. Now this one I did was much brighter than the actual, you know, the actual photo, I said that that was my sister's photo because she grows um, sh hybrid iris. But I'm looking at the photo right now and I'm realizing this was my iris. That, this, was, this was our little front garden area. We had tons of roses and stepping stones and everything. And this was in Nevada before we moved to Sedona. This was actually my iris that I grew. So. I'm kind of proud of myself because it was very, very hard to grow flowers in Nevada. We were the only ones in the entire neighborhood that had flowers. I think we were the only ones in the town, huh, Gare? Mm -hmm. <laughs> People didn't have flowers there. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to grow flowers also here in Sedona because we have no soil. It's all rock. Unfortunately, beautiful, beautiful red rocks, but all I have is a few pots of flowers and a tiny little rose garden now. Not much. Okay, I'm just dabbing some of this purple on, or this magenta on in some areas. And we really don't have much up here, maybe just a little bit up here. Just a little. <clears throat> And I'm going to go in with a little more white right in, white into that magenta color. 
and hit this one one more time right there and what the heck how about right there and then we'll soften that down okay I'm gonna switch back to my filbert brush and oops I see one thing I have to bring this dark up a little little bit right here a little bit right there artists must have patience oh yeah so many people I hear them say I just don't have patience but they keep trying to paint and I'm sorry to have to tell you this but you won't make it if you don't have patience. Uh, you must have patience as an artist. And you must have passion. Passion to love what you do. Okay, over on this area, I'm going to take some orange right here and fill in this area right here. I'm using the, the edge of my filbert brush. And how about right here? I'm going to put a tiny bit of, I didn't put red medium out, I only put red light out on my palette, so I'm going to put a tiny bit of um, crimson in with the orange and try to darken that orange a little. And I want to make um, a little darker area right here. Whoops. Darker. Diana said so right about passion. Oh, yeah. And there's just a couple little little hits right there. And over here. I'll have to bring that yellow out over that in a little bit because I'm trying to tuck this in. <clears throat> And then we have orange with yellow to go a little lighter. I'm, you, I'm working the paint pretty dry now, no medium. My paint's pretty soft, so I don't have to have it. And then let's see, we'll go right here. And I'm going to pull out the orange and yellow right here and right here. And a little bit up here. They said only, but only half the painting is showing. I'm doing huh? this so you can get it. We can get oh, close. Oh, yeah. To this is what I'm working on. This part right here. Yeah, I can't. Sh yeah. If I show the whole thing, I have to back up. He has to back up. Yeah, right. And uh, so. You know, I'll show the whole thing after you're finished. And then while I've got um, this warm color, I'm going to add some to that. Uh, yellow and orange, I'm going to add some ochre and I'm going to go right in here in this area, right here. And brush down like that. This is the underneath part of the petal where it's flipped over and maybe hit the outer edge of this petal a little bit. And let's take some of that phthalo, phthalo red rose with some white or maybe even a little bit of red in it. And I'm just going to hit this edge a little. A little, yes, it's a little. And how about right here? Now let's soften that all together. I'll just finish that little petal up right now. And I'm going to take ochre and white. Again, pretty dry, ochre and white, mostly ochre. And I'm going to hit it right here and brush down. That's underneath that little part that's going to be flipped up. Ochre and white.
and out. Here we've got some ochre and white in this area here. Ochre and white. Now remember, I'm not going to have time to re really refine this painting. I mean, I would spend many more hours on it <clears throat> if I um, was going to do it. I, I, I have about two of these paintings partly worked up, and what I'm going to do is um, finish them up and really spend some time on them, and then I'm going to put them up for sale on our website. So if anyone's interested in them, just email me and let me know and I can save them for you. <clears throat> and let's see, maybe a little, hit a little bit of that. This is ochre and white, but more white in it this time. Had a little catch light on these ends right here. And maybe a little more right here coming out. <clears throat> Yeah, I would do a lot more refining on this before I put these, these two that I've started up for sale. So if you're interested, just email us. Okay, let's get on this area right here. Am I getting hung up on my wire? Yeah. Uh, okay. Jane Potter, how much? I don't know yet, Jane. You'll just have to check my website. It'll be a few weeks. Um, just keep checking my website. They won't be terribly expensive. Not like our gallery paintings. Okay, this is, um, uh, what is it? <laughs> Ultramarine, Ultramarine Blue. I'm going crazy. Ultramarine Blue and White or you could use white, or you could use this um, king's blue, king's blue, either one. And I want a light blue. Let's see, I'm gonna get it a little darker here. And this, well, one of these, yeah. The, the original that I've got all the stenciling on mm -hmm. um, won't be for sale, but the two light, like this, um, the demos that I have, but I'll fix the demos up. And they, if they want gold leaf on it, gold leaf border, embossed border, they can request that, and I'll put that on. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. You see what I'm doing here with the blue? That's now I'm just using the edge of the brush to put that in, and then I'm going to soften it down into the mauve or the or the purpley pink there you see how soft I'm getting that Can you turn it this way? is that better yeah. okay and you see the shape it comes down more right here and then it goes up kind of in a little triangle area yeah and over here we'll do the same thing here along this edge. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use a lot more white now in with the blue, a lot more white in with the blue and we're going to do a little bit right there but not bring it down quite as far You don't want to cover up all the darker blue that's under there. And watch, watch your shapes. I gotta do something here. I gotta fill that in there. <clears throat> Just always, most of the time, rather working from dark to light. And a little bit right in here. A lot of detail in this painting. A lot of detail. And 
then let's see I'm going to go back to my filbert right now I'm just going to fill in this little area right here and then I'm going to take some of that mauve color and there's the little what we call the the caterpillar that little the stamen area mm -hmm. sometimes it's yellow and orange and it looks like a caterpillar and it just falls down the petal well this this one was white for some reason well there's a little shadow under there so I'm taking the mauve and I'm just gonna place a little bit of a shadow under there and over here a little bit right along there <clears throat> Oops, sorry. That's just a habit of mine. Fill that in right there. Now we're going to take very, very dry white. Dry, no medium. Again, I like to use titanium white. Not this, not, I, we use Grumbacher titanium white. Not the original, for, um, not the soft formula, but the original formula. It's still pretty soft, but... Um, it's called Original Titanium White. It has the best coverage. <clears throat> I see how I'm just using the corner of that brush or the edge of that filbert brush. And I'm not messing with it. I'm not going to keep rubbing it in and rubbing it in. I'm just laying it on quite heavy. And over here, a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to soften just where the two meet, the two colors, the blue and the white. And then I'll take the purple and come back down through it a little bit right here. It mixes in with the white, but that's okay. Go a little darker. <clears throat> and this is a little yellow and green just some yellow and green right here yellow and green over here maybe up here a little And then we'll take a liner, a long liner brush. See the long hairs on it? Now this time I'm going to use a little bit of medium because I have to thin the white down a little. You have to thin it down, not quite to an ink consistency. A um, little heavier than an ink consistency. And get it just on the end of your brush and then we'll make these little caterpillar things. Can you see that, Gary? Can they see that on there? Yeah. Very, very light pressure. I'm using just the tip of the brush. Just the tip. Some of them might come down the other direction a little bit. Gina wants to know if this painting will go to the gallery. No. Not my demos, no. Yeah, they can't hear me. No, my demos won't go to a gallery. Uh, and the original I'm keeping in my collection. It's not one of our that goes to a gallery. By the way, Gary, if you're in Sedona area, March and April, Gary is going to be the featured artist at the Sedona Art Center Fine Art Gallery. He's a regular artist there, exhibitor there, and he's going to be the featured artist for two months. So if you're in the area... Stop by, and I'm going to take a little more of that mauve and just run it under there. I kind of lost my shadow under there. <clears throat> there's a lot, after you get the whole canvas covered, then there's a lot of little, little stuff to do on this. A lot of detail stuff. I'm going to show you some little dot dots in a minute. <clears throat> And I'm going to hit just a little bit of a highlight in here. 
but these these ones that I'm going to sell these demos, like I said, I will I will bring them up to my standards um, and work on them, and I won't just leave it at this stage. I've also got little edges we've got to do. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to turn it to face me so I can see what the heck I'm doing, and Gary gets mad at me when I do that. I'm taking um, orange with yellow medium, mostly yellow medium and orange, and I'm going to, with a little, a little round brush, and I'm going to put some, they had, oh, that doesn't show, so I'm going to go lighter. I'm going to go up to the next stage, that real light yellow, and I'm going to dot with a touch of orange. Actually, it's picking up the orange underneath, so you Why don't. Why that orange Because it complements the purple. Why that is popping. Yep. Now I'm not going to take the time. I took a lot of time and did all these little, little dot dots on this one, and I'm not going to take all that time until I fix this up later for sale, because I would go much slower on this and really fix it up. What you do last is what people see first. Yep. So repeat it. They don't hear. Yep, what you paint last is what people see first. They don't see all the underneath trouble that you went to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why uh, so many people skip over all those preliminary stages of this painting that I did. People skip over that. And they want to go right to this sugar, like frost the cake first before they make the cake or frost the cupcakes, because that's the neato part. That's the part that looks great. But it's so important to get your foundation on first. That starts with your reference, your good drawing. Myra wants to know if the iris caterpillar... Caterpillar, yeah. ...is not called... I don't know. ...a beard and flower? Yeah. Terms? Yeah, I think so. If you want to be technical, I always call it a caterpillar. I'm not technical, but... Yes, that's that's a good thought. It's some, but you know, some irises are called bearded irises, and then some aren't. Maybe um, I see people that paint iris that forget to put that in. Maybe their photo didn't have it in. Maybe they weren't bearded irises and didn't have a beard. <laughs> maybe shave. Yeah, yeah, maybe shave. And then, um, yeah, I would I would get in here and I'll clean this up later with a tiny little brush. This one has quite a few um, quite a few uh, hairs on it. It's a little little chubby. This is the fun part. Yeah. This, yes. You know, this makes the painting. Look yeah. at this glow. Yeah. I wonder if any you guys do they see it? The glow. <laughs> yeah. People glow. don't see. You have to be able to see what you're looking at when you paint. Here's some little uh, little light blue dots coming down, little light blue. And I had little white dots and everything coming down in this area. This is so fun to do. <clears throat> but we got in a minute, get on those edges, mm. which I will. <clears throat> you know, you could pick that painting up and bring it into the camera so they could just have a glance at your detail. Yeah, just a second, I will. I will before I'm finished. Because I still have to explain the background yet. Okay, so very fast, I'm going to get some of that blue, bring some of that blue over there in that area. I'm going to show the little ruffle. This had very, very roughly edges. And they were a very warm color like this. So I'll just start out with some ochre. <clears throat> and maybe a tiny, tiny touch of mauve. Ochre with a tiny touch of the mauve or the, or the purple. And I'm using the filbert brush. And I'm going to whip in some of these. These are the little edges that are flipped up. It had tons of them, almost all the way around the petals. This is ochre with a little bit of mauve. 
and it had now this is where you'd have to go because you're going to be messing up your background if your background's already in so you would have to go around and clean up your your edges um, with your background color or like I said before you can do your background after you do the row uh, the iris um, this is this is more of a hard edge painting so you don't have lost and found edges where you're painting a wet flower onto a wet background and you and you um, blend the edges together this can have this is hard edge so you can go back around your flower after you get it done and put your background in around the flower so anyway these little edges that are flipped up they're not uniform all the way around <clears throat> And I'm not, I don't think I'm even going to finish them. I'll finish them before I post the picture. Well, I won't post this picture. We've got the original that I'm working from that we'll post for you to see. But anyway, these edges would be all the way, mostly all the way around. And I'm making a big mess of them right now because these really took me some time to do. And I don't want to take all that time right now. They would be over here too. And then after you get that, that darker color, I went in with yellow and a little bit of white. Yellow and white. And I highlighted just some of them. See that? Little scalloped. You don't want to highlight them evenly all over the place. Push down, lift up, push down, lift up. See that? You wouldn't, I didn't go in here with my dark first, but I'll just whip these in right now. So you don't want that, that brighter highlight all over. But some places it's real thin, um, a thin line, a thin little flip up, and then some places it's, it's fatter. And the same thing I would do over there too. <clears throat> so I think now I could go and just refine this till the cows come home which I'll do later but I'm not going to take the time now it, like if there's any places you'd want to soften out or anything like that that look too hard you would go and do that and again you would go and clean up your your background if you've done your background first clean it up around your edges of the flower to make them nice and sharp. <clears throat> the leaves, very simple. They are nothing more than just, if you want cool, they have kind of gray green leaves, uh, the irises. So I would use the uh, chrome oxide green, which is this bluer gray green, this one here. And I never use my green straight. I might put a little bit of white a little bit of white in it and maybe a little ochre to warm it up just a little. Now that's if you want them real um, kind of a gray green which they actually are or you can mix sienna uh, sap green with a little sienna or even even um, alizarin. Yeah. Never never use your sap greens straight. Anthony gray. Hi Anthony never use your sap green straight um, mix something in them ochre crimson sienna even if you want them want it even darker mix some ultramarine blue with it um, it's a very raw color i see so many people using it straight and it just makes the hair stand up on my arms so <clears throat> these leaves i'm going to raise this up gary is that going to affect you these leaves, um, maybe I'll, I'll run. I've just got them based in with some um, chrome oxide and ochre and white. And I'm just going to maybe run a little bit of dark through here. I've got a little dark on my brush. Very simple. You can just make up your composition of your leaves or, look, again, look at your reference photo to see what the leaves really look like. Look at your reference photo to see what the buds look like. And you can see where some of my leaves in the background are lighter 
and some of the front ones are darker or you could do some in the back darker and some in the front lighter you want the contrast not all the same tone all the way across and you want to vary the the tones of the leaves <clears throat> maybe make this darker where it goes off the canvas you don't want anything too bright or too light where it goes off off the canvas like down here or a real bright lime green going off here you want it kind of subtle and soft going off the edges and maybe dark coming down and then some of these leaves have little brownish edges or points on them there's just some orange and sienna or orange and yellow and you can just make some little warm edges on some of them some of them they get a little bit um, I don't know dried on the ends <clears throat> just you just don't want everything the same tone or the same color the same value or the same color here I put a little bit of mauve on the edges mauve and white um, to kind of tie in with the rose color I mean excuse me I'm so used to doing roses with the um, put a little more a little mauve and pink and white maybe to tie in with the iris maybe some here it's a little dry there it's not going on it's going on kind of heavy keep it subtle I'm, I'm not doing it too subtle right now but the idea is to have different values and different colors maybe some green and white and get a little bit of highlight on it where the shine would be on the leaf I always don't get too veiny all over with big hard veins soften your veins oops I just lost my vein because that's a little wet down there yeah don't get real veiny all over we think one looks good and we start doing them all over so I'd put them in and then I'd soften them so that is the idea now I didn't finish those little little edges I think I got everything else pretty well in I didn't finish the little curled up edges but I'll do that later but I'll let Gary just come in close on that one a little bit if he can and then I'll put the original back up or one of my originals let me move my chair out of the way excuse me for the noise and um, and so it is very rough but that's the idea a lot of steps to it I didn't say it was easy you know I forgot I also forgot to do especially right here this little turned up edge is right here but I can't I can't reach it because Gary pulled it over <laughs> there's a little flipped up edge there you'll see in the original when I put it up <clears throat> so shall we put the original back up and I can show you the just talk for a couple of minutes about the what the uh, background was mm -hmm. okay wait, wait, wait. I wonder if I can bring that in so you can see the detail in there well Whoop. there we go let's show the There's detail the detail of course we can put your other one up yeah now. that's not as detailed as my original this is one of the originals I did sell my very very first one this this was the second one I did and my very first one that had the bright turquoise background I sold that I sold another one with a gray background with gray leaves and on our e-course you're going to show them yeah how you did all this can I get in there a minute can I get get you to back up and I'm going to explain a little bit sure. on our e-course on the um, pa paint with passion online course on my four hour segment uh, four hour technique tape I did some borders and I did some gold leafing and I showed you how to do that and I demonstrated it but what this is is what I did 
uh, first, I painted my background, and this was turquoise with white and just a tiny bit of green in it. That was that all over base color on the background. And then after the whole thing was dry, after the iris was dry, the background was dry, I went in and I had the idea of the stencils. Um, I've seen other people do the stencils. I didn't, I didn't originate the stencil idea. Um, it's been used a lot now and I really like it. This is my first time to do the stencils on this type of background. So what it is, is um, I used, I don't know if you can see it, this little stencil here. I have lots of stencils in my collection and I used this one. I can't tell you the name of it, but I thought it was kind of cool. So um, I mixed up a very thin glaze of paint. I put liquid in the paint to have it dry fast and make it thin. And then I mixed up just kind of a, an ochre brown color. And I did, first of all, I did a few, you can, I think you can barely see them, maybe up here. It's just a little different than the turquoise background color. Maybe in here, there's some of it. And it's just, it's weaving all through here. It's not much darker than the background color. It's very, very subtle. And then I mixed up a little more ochre in the color to make it stand out a little more. Then I placed a few of those ones. So I've got the two different tones of the stencils in here. And then I went and the ones that I did with the lighter color, I took a wadded up paper towel and just softened some of the paint off of it while it was still wet. And then it made them really subtle. They just set right into the background so you can barely see them. Yeah, yeah, there's more I'll be, I showed some demonstration canvases on the e-course, on the online course. And then, after it was all dry, this was all dry, I marked off my borders with um, masking tape. And then I went in and did embossing, and that's this raised, it's raised up. We do this on quite a lot of canvases. Gary and I started doing that on a lot of our gallery paintings. And <clears throat> I, wanted a, I wanted a pattern kind of with swirls and stuff that kind of would tie in with this stencil that I used here, but I didn't want it the same. So I found another stencil, and I don't think you can see it. It's, it's right here. And that's what I used. Just, I took it two pieces of it, one piece here and one piece here. So what you do, you lay your stencil, you tape it on your, your border area, right over the turquoise color, and then you use a stencil, uh, a medium. It's, um, this is deco art, and there's all kinds that they make. It's almost like a spackle, and it's kind of like a, it's a paste. And once your stencil is taped on to the canvas, you take a small palette knife with your paste and you go over the stencil. You have to hold the stencil down tight and you fill in the stencil with your paste. Then you very carefully lift it straight off while it's wet. Then you let that stenciling paste dry and then you do your gold leafing. And your gold leafing is just, it comes in packs like this very, very thin, very, very thin. It's imitation gold leaf. It's usually about eight, nine dollars for a pack of 25 sheets. And you have to put sizing on first. This is old world. It's like a glue, like a white glue. And you brush this over your dry stencil, your dry stencil, the, the raised area. You, you actually put it over the whole area wherever you want the gold, and you let it set for about 30 minutes to tack up, and then you put your gold leaf over it, and then brush off all the excess. Now what happened, this particular one, the gold leaf was really, really bright. It was solid on here, like this is solid gold leaf. This isn't, but I had the gold leaf solid on here, 
And I didn't like it so bright, and I thought, well, I have a choice of either antiquing the, the gold leaf and making it a little duller, which you can do. You can make an antique lace. And I thought, well, I'm going to sand it all off and start over and maybe not even go leaf this, maybe just have it back down to the original turquoise. So I took some fine sandpaper and started sanding it to sand the gold off. And then I got part way and I thought, hmm, I kind of like that. It's kind of like distressed looking or aged or something. And I'd never done that before. That's what where those happy accidents come in. And I had never done that before. And I... So I didn't finish sanding it all the way off. I just decided to just leave it part way like that. And then, um, oh, and another thing on this background, I also go back to that. Um, after I got these little stencil uh, designs in um, and I let them dry so you wouldn't smear them, then I made up a, a little antiquing glaze just with some brown. And you can either use liquid or, or, um, or a glaze medium. And I put a little bit on a paper towel and I dabbed it all over the background. I doubt you can see all over here where it's antiqued. And then other places, it's the plain turquoise in the background. Then other places you see it's brand, not so bright. That's where I antiqued it with the light brown antiquing. And then I, white, I dabbed it off like this with my paper towel all over. So there's just so many things you can do. It's just crazy. And then I put a gold frame on this. And so because it was so much work, I'm not going to sell this one like I did my original. So <laughs> anyway, um, so I hope you guys, let me see. I've got just a couple more things to talk to you about. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this today. And I appreciate you sticking with me for such a long time. And um, this one really is involved. Yeah, two hours. Um, boy, you could have done all kinds of other things, <laughs> gone shopping and had a spa treatment and everything, but you chose to spend it with me, so I'm delighted. Um, just a couple more notes here. Um, oh, and after you, after you finish your whole painting and everything's dry, be sure you varnish it. And we used to use a spray, uh, Grumbacher, Damar varnish spray, and spray it on. And you can still use that, and we do that. But now we found uh, that we like this. We've been talking to some um, professional gallery artists and uh, wondering what they were using. And they're using Gam Gambar. Gambar. You see that? And it's by Gamlin. And I don't know, in some of your countries, you may not be able to get a hold of that. Um, and it's, we use the gloss, and it's really pretty um, on. And we use like a big brush, a soft, a very soft brush, like these. These are these, very, very soft, they're tackle on here. To brush it on, the whole thing when it's completely dry. And by the way, don't ever try to do gold leafing when this is still wet, or the background's still wet. It has to be completely dry before you do your gold leafing, or you'll have gold leaf um, sticking all over the place, um, even without the sizing under it. It'll stick to your wet oil. But then you want to varnish it, and that will also keep your gold leaf from tarnishing. And it will protect your painting and give it a nice um, semi-gloss shine. So, again, don't forget, Paint with Passion. It opens March 1st for registration. Go to our website, uh, www.jenkinsartstudio.com. That's where you'll sign up. If you have any questions that aren't on, it tells all about the course. But if, if some of your questions aren't on there, feel free to email us at garyjenkinsart at gmail.com. That's garyjenkinsart at gmail.com. And I think that's about it. I have a new business page. It's um, a Facebook page. It's fb.me, M-E, slash Catherine Jenkins Studio. So that's my new Facebook page. I'd appreciate it if you go there and 
give me a like and if you give me a like you'll automatically be signed up to be our Facebook friend because our other Gary's page that I often post on uh, we have reached our a long time ago our 5,000 limit that they limit you to be friends so if you give me a like on my Facebook page you'll automatically be um, one of our Facebook friends uh, this will be posted later my demo tape will be posted later on YouTube after Gary gets it edited it will be posted very soon on our on Gary's Facebook page um, and you can watch it anytime and I guess that's about it and I really thank you for watching I really appreciate all you guys you've been so supportive all through the years we couldn't have uh, kept doing you know, our career like this Joanne without you wants you to repeat that address again. okay uh, my Facebook my my one my um, Facebook page business page mine is FB stands for Facebook dot me slash Katherine Jenkins studio our email is Gary Jenkins art at gmail.com our website is www.jenkinsartstudio.com we have all sorts of videos TV videos books pattern packets everything on our website so thank you all for joining me and I don't know when we'll be doing the next live stream we might Gary and I both come on camera for a real quick live uh, one or two nights before paint with passion opens so it'd be right around the end of February you might see us for a real short uh, little demonstration uh, right before March 1st so thanks guys and we'll see you later bye bye